Oh, elves? Those light-footed, beautiful, slim creatures from lore? They're nothing like the stories. The man sitting next to me gestured wildly, then took a long, slow sip of his liquor. His ragged leather coat and short, spiked hair stood at odds to his apparent age. I watched him as he talked to the bartender, clicking one of his many finger rings on the tabletop every few seconds, a nervous tick that began to wear on me. I'm never going back, that's for damn sure. Tick, tick, tick. Those rich assholes controlling El Haven, fuck. Tick, 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 tick. I pushed the dark hair out of my eyes with a quick swipe of my hand and turned to him. Hey man, do you mind? That's getting kind of annoying. I gestured to his hand as he clicked it on the countertop again. Tick, 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 tick. Make it a habit of cutting in on other people's conversations, you skinny ass kid. Well, we're not exactly in a hotel room, are we? I glared at him, then turned back to my beer. I listened as he continued to talk to the barkeep. I'm somewhat of a renegade, a bad boy, as the ladies would say. The bartender snorted and continued cleaning the glass he'd picked up a second before. I glanced at the second man again, taking special note of his teeth when he grinned. I shivered. He'd filed them down to sharp, cat-like points. Would you believe there are entrances in a lot of major east and west coast cities? Yeah, the Alvar own a cave that they turn into a sort of port of entry for the different races. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Right, replied the bartender. You don't know the half of it, Benny. Tap, 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 tap. Chuck, for the tenth time, my name is Chuck, or bartender. All right, barkeep. The man held his hands up in surrender. You don't know the half of it. Three quarters of the homeless population are literally just glamoured races, trying to make a new living outside of Elhaven. Tap, 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 tap. I glanced at the man a few seats down. His shoes had taken the place of the ring. I sighed. The man pushed his empty cup toward the barkeep and motioned for another one. You got money to pay? You're 13 drinks down and I still haven't seen anything. The man fished into his leather satchel. He wore his waist and produced a few golden coins. Is this enough? Tick, tap, tap, tick. American money only. Sorry. The man sighed and put the coins back, then pulled out a few hundred dollar bills and slapped them on the countertop. He gestured to me. Fine, put this guy's drinks on my tab. He's looking more wound up than a rattlesnake. I wasn't sure what to say, so I said thanks. What's your name? I should probably know who I'm accepting drinks from. Lazuli. It's Asian. Tick, tick, tap, tap. No, it's not. That's Latin for blue. He turned to me. Well, aren't you a smartass? Tick. I could feel the alcohol beginning to kick in after just one and a half beers. Looking at the man for a second, I could see that he didn't mean to be insulting. He was just overly expressive. His words had a sort of aggression behind them, but when I looked into his electric blue eyes, I didn't see any sort of malice or anger behind them. The bartender poured me another hazy IPA, and the man sitting next to me some sort of liquor fusion. Lazuli pulled a small vial from his satchel and squeezed a drop of something into his glass when the bartender's back was turned. The liquid glowed for a second, then fizzled out. He downed the glass in a single swig. Woo! That's some good stuff! He got up and moved a seat closer to me. Were his eyes glowing? No, just my imagination. Tick, tick, tap, tick, tick. So what's your name? He asked. Hampton, I replied. Want to see the port of Elhaven? I, wait, what now? You heard me. I'll show you Elhaven. It'll be fun. No, I'm good. I just want to chat with people and drink some beer. Fuck this guy. I wasn't about to leave this bar with a total stranger. Maybe a cute girl but not some weirdo old guy. Suit yourself. Tickety tick tick tick. He moved back to his seat. I continued drinking for another hour, slowly nursing my beer, listening to the odd man tell stories of this El Haven. He was probably some fantasy nut. I finished my beer and bid the bartender and Lazuli a good night. At my car, I fumbled with my keys and unlocked my door. Tick 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 tick. I whirled around, coming face to face with Lazuli. Are you good to drive? Fuck man, don't sneak up on me like that. Don't touch my car, it's a rental. I hadn't heard him make a single noise. I was alone. Then suddenly, I wasn't. I'm not some asshole that gets sloshed and drives. I had three beers and food. I'm good. Azuli put his old hands up in front of him, finger rings glinting in the parking lot's street lamps. 
All right, all right. Just checking to make sure. Have a nice evening. I watched him walk back inside. My heartbeat settled back into normal rhythm as I took a deep breath and slid down into the seat of my rental. I buckled in and drove off. I set maps to route me to my hotel. I wasn't a party animal like some of my peers that worked in finance. I checked the time and saw that it was 8.30 p.m. Perfect. I hated going to bed late. It always felt terrible trying to get up early after a late night. Arriving at the hotel, I walked up to the front desk ready to check in. I pulled out my driver's license and set it on the counter. Hi, I'm... The man ignored me and I glanced around but didn't see any other customers. He wasn't on the phone. Instead, he held a thick novel. Excuse me, uh, I'd like to check in. I'm almost at a good stopping point. I waited for a few minutes. Excuse me. The man held up a finger not looking up from his novel. I felt anger course through me quick and fierce. I slammed my palm down on the counter, startling the attendant. I said, I'm ready to check in. I was surprised by my outburst. The alcoholic beverages must have affected me more than I'd realized, or maybe something else had me on edge. The man behind the counter glared at me. Fine. Name, please? Jeremiah Hampton. He slid a piece of paper over to me, which I signed. Here's your key, room 308. I took the elevator up to the third floor, proceeding to room 308. The green LED winked at me as I presented my keycard and pushed inside. The air smelled clean, yet also different, like a stranger's house. I rummaged through my small travel suitcase and changed from my two-piece suit into some exercise shorts and a loose-fitting t-shirt. I put my phone and wallet on the nightstand next to my bed. Feeling slightly restless, I dropped down and did a couple of push-ups, then sit-ups. Well, I guess it's time for bed. I flicked off the lamp next to the bed and listened to the silence. It was loud at first, buzzing in my ears. Tick, 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 tick. I sat up straight in bed, flicking on the light. Nothing. What was that? The sound had come from out in the hall. I could have sworn it sounded like a familiar tapping. I waited a good ten minutes then flicked the light off. I'm going crazy, I said to myself. Click, 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 click. Fuck. I stumbled up and flicked the lamp on again. This time it sounded like it was coming from my door. I crept to the door and peered out of the peephole. Nothing. What the hell? Goosebumps grew on my arm and the hair stood on end. I paced for a few minutes, then glanced at the clock. 9.30 p.m. I grabbed some earbuds from my suitcase and popped them in, playing some gentle classical music to calm my nerves. I must have drifted to sleep because I suddenly woke with a start. I wasn't sure what had done it, but my heart was racing. The earbuds had fallen out of my ears. I checked the time, 12.30 a.m. Click, clickety-click, click. The sound was on the headboard right next to my head. I screamed and fell out of the bed, fumbling with my phone's flashlight. I pointed it at the bed. Lazuli's face shone at me from the dark, his leer wide, teeth grotesque, long and pointed. Hello there, kid! I screamed again. He lunged at me, but I kicked up, catching his face with the bottom of my foot. I grunted. I must have temporarily blinded him with my light, because he didn't see the kick coming. I just want to taste the flesh! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! He leered at me crazily, his teeth clacking as blood and saliva dribbled down his chin. He grabbed my ankle. His fingers were no longer slightly old, but now ancient looking. The rings on his fingers were loose and clinked together. In a dim part of my mind, I was amazed that they didn't just fall off. He pulled me to him in an effort of strength and sank his teeth into my calf. Hot, burning heat, then pain. I screamed again, desperately kicking and jerking. I fumbled with my phone trying to call 911, but Lazuli swiped a desiccated hand around and struck the phone from my grip. I knew I was going to die eaten by an otherworldly monster. Suddenly, the door exploded inward. Three six-foot-tall humanoid shapes stepped through the door. They were wearing an assortment of black tactical assault gear and face masks. Cautiously, they shone gun-mounted flashlights into the room. As soon as the light touched Lazuli, they stopped and took a defensive stance just inside the door. As soon as the light touched Lazuli, he let go of my leg and dived behind the bed. I rolled away from him and began crawling toward the SWAT team, for that's what I thought they were. They opened fire on the bed. The guns made soft fft, fft, fft sounds, and I heard yelps of fright, then Lazuli's voice. I have a hunting permit. I'm permitted. 
Lazuli Elegan. This is Subjugation Elvar Bravo. Surrender immediately or feel the full might of justice. One of the team grabbed me by my good arm and dragged me out of the room. The other two people advanced into the room, spraying suppressed bullets at the place Lazuli was hiding. I tried looking into the room, but the person in front of me slapped me lightly. Eyes forward. How long since you were bitten? I, uh... How long since you were bitten? The woman said again impatiently. Her commanding voice left me no choice but to answer. I gasped in pain as she picked apart the ruined tatters of my pants leg. A few seconds before you came in? To save rabies or something? No, but our bodies carry different bacteria and virus. Who knows what they will do to your system? Wait, what? This is gonna hurt. She pulled a thick tube from her vest and thumbed a button on the back. I saw a set of very long needles shoot out, then back in. Wait, no. I don't need that. I tried to crawl away, but she just leaned forward, put the tube to my ass cheek, and hit the button. I'm pretty sure the needles hit my pelvic bone. That's how deep it felt like they went. I yelled again, but a second later, the sting was gone. From inside the room, gunfire had ceased. In its place, the sound of scuffling and blows repeatedly striking someone. What's happening? I asked the woman standing guard at the door. You're unlucky, that's what's happening. A thump and then silence. I glanced at the woman, then heard one of the kill team inside speaking. Of our command, we have contained the target. I repeat, target neutralized. The woman next to me called into the room. What do we do with the human here? He was bit, right? Yes, sir. Bring him with. I looked up, just in time to see the butt of a rifle explode stars into my vision.